Colouring lots of drawings in an animation can be a laborious process, but there's a few features in OpenTunes that can help, and that's what we'll look at today. Hello friends, and welcome to part two of the Fill Tool Options. And this week I'll look at the two options that will help when filling multiple drawings. And I'll finish by using these to complete the colouring of my Lila animation I've been working on over the past few weeks. And as always, if you're new here, my name's Darren. And on this channel I have OpenTunes tutorials, like this one, news videos, collaborations and animations. So subscribe to not miss them and hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video. And if you're interested in animating with OpenTunes, check out my other videos on the channel, including plenty of beginner videos. So last week I took a look at most of the Fill Tools options to show how you can use them all to best colour a single drawing and showed how they can help you to more quickly choose colours to use when colouring an image. And there's a link to that video in the card above, so I'd highly recommend you take a look at that video first and then come back to this one. And the other options help when colouring a single drawing, but for an animation you'll have many, many drawings to colour, so anything you can do to make this more efficient will certainly help your productivity. And last week I showed how I drew this grid to demonstrate all of the fill options, but you'll really see how it helps this week. And remember, the fill tool only works on vector and tunes raster levels, so I've only got the grid drawn in those two levels. But first a quick reminder of a couple of options that will help when using the fill tool. So firstly before you fill, remember to set the type option and the mode option. And using the standard bucket fill of normal type and areas mode, you can fill by clicking in a separate area, or you can drag across multiple areas and they'll all fill as you pass them. And you can also choose to fill using one of the other types, so rectangular, freehand or polyline. And you can just draw a large area and fill many sections at once, again making more efficient use of your time. And of course don't forget to change the mode if you want to fill areas, lines or lines and areas. So first is the onion skin option and this is a great one and I've not used this while filling myself yet but now I better understand it, it looks really useful. And basically it lets you fill in the style from the nearest filled onion skin frame and it's easier to demonstrate than to explain. So let me show you. So this is only available for the vector level at the minute. So if I colour some areas on frame 2, and then again on frame 3, I colour these areas at the bottom, including an overlap with the bottom row of colours here. And now if I move to frame number 4, what the onion skin mode does is it allows me to fill on frame 4 using the colours from frame 2. So you can choose the type of fill to use, so I'll choose normal at first. So if you click on a square, it pulls that colour through to the current frame. So red and blue in this case. Now I was clicking on one square at a time, but that pulls the colour through to the current position. But what you can also do is click and drag to move the colour to another area. So if I click on frame 4, on the area that has red behind it on frame 2, and then drag over here and then release, red appears there and again click and drag and green appears here. So we've got a character moving across the screen, you can pull the colours through from one position on screen through to where they are on the next frame. So they don't have to be directly above each other which is perfect for your animations. But also if an image doesn't move at all you can use the rectangle fill to pull in all of the selected colours in the rectangle region. So if I go to frame 5, and there's no colours, and again add the onion skin to show frame 2, if I change the rectangular tool and make sure we're filling areas, I can just click and drag and it pulls all three colours through at once to the current frame, which is really handy if part of your animation doesn't change from one frame to the next. Finally, it's worth reminding you that it pulls the colour from the nearest onion skin framed. So if you've got onion skin showing on frame 2 and 3, if you remember, I overlapped the purple colour on this bottom row of the blue and green colours. So if I change to the standard fill and click on those, it pulls through the purple from frame 3 
not the blue and green from frame 2. However, if I now click on the blue and green above, the nearest frame with colour is frame 2. So this means as you move from frame to frame, from frame 6 to 7 to 8, it'll choose the colours from the nearest completed frame so it'll ignore the previous ones. And this is handy as you move from one frame to the next to pull the colours in from an earlier frame but you're still only colouring one frame at a time. And the second option I'd like to show you this week allows you to actually colour multiple frames at once. So the final option to show you is the frame range option. And this is available for both vector and tune raster levels. But I'll show you on the tune raster level here today. So what the frame range option allows you to do is to select where you fill on your first frame and select where you want to fill on your last frame and then open tunes interpolates between the two. And it does this based on the position of where you fill and on the shapes you draw using the different fill types. So I'll start off using the normal fill type and we're filling in only areas. And I'll turn the frame range on. I'll make sure I start on frame one. I've got the red color chosen and I'll choose to fill here on frame one. And then you simply move to the final frame that you want to fill and select where you want the fill to end and then open tunes fills all of the frames in between interpolated between those two positions on screen so let's jump back to frame one automatically and then if i scroll through all of the frames you'll see it's filled across them from the first frame i filled in to the last and when you've got a character or a prop moving across the screen this is ideal and this works better when the fill area doesn't move too much because you can't change the interpolation rate and allow for ease in and ease out. So for instance if your character just moves from here to here. Or even better if your character doesn't move at all you can simply select in the same area and it'll fill in all the frames in between in two clicks. And of course you might want to use the frame range option in conjunction with any of the other options that we talked about last week. So for instance, if you tick the selective option, it ensures you won't fill an area where you've already filled that area with a different colour. And changing the fill depth means that it'll fill better where there's anti-alias lines. And using the auto paint lines means it'll also fill the lines around the area where palette entries have got auto paint lines ticked. And if you remember earlier, it wasn't just a position that can be interpolated across your frame range, but also the shape that you choose to fill in. So if you change the type from normal to rectangular and with the frame range ticked on frame one we can draw a small rectangle here then move to the final frame and draw a larger rectangle on the right and it'll then fill those rectangles but also interpolate in between as the size changes and the shape changes. So if I scroll through from frame one through to 24 you'll see the rectangle moving from left to right and growing larger. And this is useful if your character is getting larger and coming towards you on the screen, but also if you need to encompass more than one area to fill in. So any self-contained area within that rectangle will be filled. So that's the theory, so now I'll just use it in practice on this little animation that I drew a few weeks ago. So there we go, that's the leader fully coloured in using the frame range option of the fill tool and doing it this way was much more efficient than colouring one frame at a time. So that's it for the fill tool and I'll be back next time where I'll be looking at how you can draw shadows on this animation in both vector and toon raster levels. So I'll see you then. In the meantime, why not try out some of the fill tools options? They'll make colouring your animations a much quicker process. And that's... A guarantee.